Hello and welcome to Press TV Spotlight. I'm Marcia Hashmi. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, the Economic Cooperation Organization, known as ECHO, has convened in Turkmenistan. The 10 members of the organization have reiterated their commitment to increase relations with each other. Iran's President Abraham Raisi addressed the summit and stressed how it is Tehran's goal to have good relations with all of its neighbors. And despite increased pressure of U.S. sanctions, enhancing relations with its neighbors will not be impeded. Well, stay with us as we take a look and at all this may mean on the spotlight. Iran's President Ebrahim Raisi has attended the 15th summit of the Economic Cooperation Organization in Turkmenistan. Addressing the one-day summit on Sunday, he assured Iran's neighbors that Washington's sanctions will have no bearing on regional cooperation and interaction. The United States' cruel sanctions against Iran will not have the slightest impact on the Islamic Republic of Iran's policy of maximum interaction with neighboring and regional countries. Raisi called on member states to work together in a range of fields from the creation of a regional electricity market to water transfer projects as well as energy ventures. He also proposed creating an internal financial mechanism by the Economic Cooperation Organization to boost its efficacy. On the sidelines of the summit, Raisi held a string of high-level bilateral meetings to discuss ways to develop relations. The Iranian president has time and again said boosting cooperation with neighboring countries is one of the major goals of his administration. He believes that approach will help improve economy as well as peace and stability in the region. Iran took a big step in this regard in September when it formally became a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. That's a Eurasian political, economic and security alliance accounting for about one-third of the world's land and exporting trillions of dollars in goods annually. Recently, Iran's deputy foreign minister, Ali Baghdadi Kani, traveled to several regional countries, including Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman, for talks on expanding bilateral cooperation. This month, he also went to four European countries, namely France, Germany, Britain, and Spain, where similar talks took place. Baghdadi Kani's European tours came ahead of talks set to begin Monday in Vienna. The talks taking place between Iran and other remaining signatories to the 2015 nuclear deal aimed to remove sanctions on Tehran. Those sanctions took effect after the U.S. left the nuclear deal in 2018 as part of a so-called maximum pressure campaign seen as an attempt to isolate Iran in international arena. More than three years into that policy, it seems that it has failed, with Iran expanding ties with countries in the region and beyond while being accepted by more international bodies. I'd like to welcome my guest to the spotlight, Mostafa Khoshchesh, journalist and political commentator out of Tehran. And John Basnich, journalist and political analyst. Well, thank you both for being uh, with me on the program. Let's start it off uh, with Mostafa. How important is this uh, economic cooperation organization in enhancing trade and mutual interests uh, for member countries? Hello, Marzia. Thanks for coming me. Well, thank you for coming. Uh, I think it's important because uh, member states are named countries uh, with lots of shared interests, common interests, and common interests. And uh, if they enhance their ties, you know, in various areas of economy, politics, and security, because of these uh, common interests and threats, they, their interests would go uh, more interwoven with each other and they could help each other. It could bring about, you know, peace by removing misunderstandings, by, you know, uh, uh, adding up. Uh, you know, the capacities and potentials of these countries, 
But for Iran, uh, uh, eco is now even more important than before because uh, not only uh, the new administration of President Raisi counts very much on developing ties with the neighbors in order to improve the Iranian economy, for sure that's one of the main ways to enhance economic you know, interest and welfare of the people, but also it also plays as part of uh, Iran's a main roadmap uh, uh, to diffuse or lower the impact of the United States sanctions, which is, uh, again, a major part of Iran's confrontation with the United States, as well as uh, the talks between uh, Iran and the U.S. and its allies, uh, you know, uh, uh, depends very much on efficacy of the sanctions on both sides. Once the U.S. sees its main uh, weapon of choice that sanctions uh, doesn't work properly or has lost its value and efficiency, then it would be more willing to strike a deal with Iran, unlike the present condition when where uh, the United States is still adamant to show uh, any kind of flexibility. So developing ties with the neighbors and with the regional groupings uh, like ECO is very much important for Iran from different aspects also when you need water, a country like Iran uh, needs lots of water supplies uh, facing drought or uh, arid conditions uh, because of the climate change okay. especially. Uh, and, and the uh, need to water is somehow, you know, water supplies. Well, stay stay with me, Mustafa. Water. We're going to get into a little bit more of the specifics um, of what uh, was talked about at the summit. But, uh, John, uh, the current government of Iran continues to reiterate, as Mustafa was saying, um, that it's prioritizing enhancing regional relations. I want to talk about the significance of that, that this government actually is not focusing uh, on Western governments per se as its priority, but first priority is neighboring countries and enhancing that development. The significance of that? Yeah, that significance goes beyond trade and resources. That is the significance that we, we obtain by having strength in numbers. As Iran develops its international relationships by making partners rather than colonies of other countries, as America does, Iran becomes an equal in trade and cooperation with other countries around it. And it brings an understanding of the Iranian situation to the fore in those other countries. And those other countries sit on the United Nations, and they can help Iran to evade the military pressures from the United States, the political efforts to do regime change in Iran. This is the main significance beyond the material, capital-driven significance of doing trade. And I want to remind people that the reason why many countries do not have good relations with their surrounding neighboring countries is greatly linked to capitalism and the pursuit of the cheapest product without any reference to the national interest. And here now, Iran is making a bold new stake in ex exiting that system to trade with its neighbors and to build cooperation with its neighbors, which is with the primary uh, initiative based on the interests of Iran and its neighbors. This brings you the strength in numbers with which you can use to defend yourself from unfair and illegal military pressures. Well, John, you talked about as far as uh, uh, capitalism, but isn't also one of the policies of the United States is it's, it's this divide, basically, and conquer type of mentality still that to make sure that regional countries, especially this region, actually do not have that solidarity and that it does what it can to make sure sure that they never unite. Absolutely. This comes from as far back and before the Roman Empire when the policy of the empire was to divide and conquer. So the American 
aggressive stance towards Iran, is focusing on dividing Iran from its first neighbors, from nations who know the Iranian people for thousands of years as their closest neighbors, dividing Iran from them, isolating Iran using sanctions, and then using the sanctions to weaken Iran internally and to try and create a fifth column inside Iran of Iranians who would act against their own national interests. Now, I think that's impossible for the United States to achieve, given the solidarity of the Iranian people against American aggression and against America's link with Israel, which would rather see Iran destroyed than ever make peace with Iran. Okay, Mustafa, I want to look at this and, and the importance of this front, if these countries could actually be united and de independent of uh, Washington's influence on it, and also the significance inside of the country that this current government, the uh, Raisi administration, um, is prioritizing neighboring countries. I mean, what does it do as far as the Iranian psyche and knowing the importance of regional countries? Well, you know, it's, uh, as I just explained, it's uh, uh, in this government, for this government, uh, expanding ties with the neighbors um, is high on the agenda. This doesn't mean that this government is going to be indifferent to the West or to the United States. In a balanced and a strategic roadmap of foreign policy, um, you need to have different plans and scenarios and you know uh, roadmaps for even your, the hostile countries that are troubling you. And this doesn't mean that Iran is going to now look to the east and would never look uh, for the west. As long as the United States leads the west, the Europeans are led by the U.S. and show hostility towards Iran and try to deceive Iran, then they do not show mutual respect. Iran would not go for them. But as soon as uh, any of these countries, like Italy, like Greece, like uh, Portugal, Spain, if they really, you know, show, uh, you know, mutual respect or any further interest to develop ties and cooperation with Tehran, with Tehran would be very much willing to expand ties with these countries. Um, but there was a problem actually in the last one or two decades in Iran when uh, some people thought that um, the only problem or the major problem is resolving the conflict with the United States and the Europeans uh, in order to expand ties with other nations, even those in the East, because the U.S. has developed some kind of hegemonic rule over these countries through dollar and its economic power. Uh, but throughout time, it was proved that their view was wrong, because even uh, when Iran was under tough sanctions, and it's still under toughening sanctions, uh, in the last several months of President Rouhani's rule, Iran signed a free trade agreement, a major agreement, with Eurasian countries. And that proved that Iran has a lot of potentials to use in the region, in the neighboring states, in ties with China and Russia. And since uh, the, I believe, the eco member states, Shanghai member states, they knew that the next government in Iran uh, would have a serious review of foreign policy and would go for real developing ties and cooperation with those in the East. Uh, uh, they uh, accelerated Iran's membership in the Shanghai organization. So the agenda of this government for many reasons, is that it really intends and plans uh, to develop ties with the neighboring states because Iran can enhance and boost its share of the market in countries like Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, or Afghanistan, CIS, the Caucasus, and even those on the southern rims of the Persian Gulf uh, to several times more in a period of four or five years. Okay. And then also, there are many potentials, intact potentials, and ties with China and Russia based on mutual respect. But I reemphasize that that doesn't mean that Iran is going to ignore the West. It would wait until the West realizes that it needs to approach Iran on the base, uh, uh, based on uh, mutual respect and equal okay. footing. That's actually why 
the Iranian top negotiator is in Vienna to reevaluate the U.S. and its European allies' uh, real intentions. All right, stay in with me, Mustafa. Japan. Stay with me, Mustafa. John, your take on this, because uh, we know that the U.S. has uh, exerted so much pressure on Iran, and of course, uh, uh, more and more sanctions. It seems every day. Despite this. Do you think that overall that sanction regime has actually failed to isolate Iran as we're looking at this particular organization? And as Mostafa had just mentioned, a couple of other organizations Iran is a part of and expanding its relations with many of these countries. Do you see it as a failed policy, the sanction regime and the ultimate goal of basically bringing Iran to its knees? Well, first of all, obviously, Iran has not been brought to its knees. That's point number one. Point number two, having worked as a war correspondent and as a general reporter in the former Yugoslavia, in Russia, and uh, in other areas of the world that have been put under U.S. sanctions, the result is always the same. Not only is the policy a failure, but the policy is a benefit. I know this sounds strange, but the policy is a benefit for the target nation. Because the target nation who is unfairly and illegally placed under sanctions finds a will to work together with its neighbors and within its own population to develop a strength that it did not have previously, to develop a kind of immunity to the American empire. And the American empire then is powerless. And this is the actual result of sanctions, is that it makes the target nation stronger. The target nation finds that resources that might have been too expensive to develop locally are now worth the investment. And with that investment, the country is more independent than it ever was before. And as an independent country, it can then enter into real partnerships with equals, not a colonial relationship with the Anglo-American dictatorship. Well, Mustafa, of course, one of the main mechanisms that the United States has used are the dealing with uh, financial transactions and controlling that. Looking at these countries, looking at these uh, member countries uh, that we're talking about from an economic perspective, how likely uh, could it be that these countries could develop some type of alternative um, uh, uh, in dealing with uh, financial transactions between each other in order to prohibit Washington from interfering? Well, it's a difficult task, but it's possible. It's already been done. I mean, the Chinese have uh, worked out several ways, the Russians also. Uh, well, one of the first uh, alternative ways or options that comes across anyone's mind is using a shared currency or a single currency. But this requires much time and effort. Sometimes such plans end up in nothing but failure. But a, a, a more possible way that has worked out for many nations, including Iran, is a foreign currency swap. Instead of using dollar, uh, that has come to be the uh, hegemonic uh, currency uh, I mean, that has become a universal uh, currency uh, for uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, you know, pressures under the U.S. pressures on oil-producing countries some 40, 50 years ago, um, after the oil shock um, in OPEC. by OPEC. Um, now the countries have realized that much of the trade tr and transactions they are doing. Uh, 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 are working in the interest of the United States one way or another because they do the deals in dollars and the U.S. is using the same kind of instrument in order to harness them in order to, uh, you know, uh, violate their sovereignty, their decision making, their growth. Let's remember that the U.S. is trying to pressure Iran to stop growth in many areas uh, like the nuclear industry and missile industry, regional power, and earning science, uh, that's uh, a decision, a sovereign decision, and they mean to violate it, and uh, uh, it's not acceptable to many independent countries. And they try to work out uh, ways, different ways. 
Uh, one way that has been used is a foreign currency swap uh, between two or, or among three nations. This has been done by the Chinese and the Russians in much of their uh, trade transactions uh, between Iran and some of its neighbors. It's been done in order to bypass the U.S. sanctions that include, uh, you know, dollar sanctions, especially for Iran. And this has been a major way used by Iran and some other countries that are also under sanctions. We call them members of the sanction club of nations. And sometimes you could do that through valuable, you know, uh, uh, metals uh, like gold and uh, other, you know, uh, precious items and mm -hmm. goods. Also, swap of goods is another way that has been underway, not only by Iran, but also many other nations that want to escape the uh, uh, dollar hegemonic rule over that economy. And also establishing an in, uh, independent bank that's independent from the World Bank, uh, because the World Bank, many of its officials and leaders, they are under, uh, they are Americans, former U.S. officials, and the World Bank is operating under the, you know, a rule or influence at least of the United States, mm -hmm. and it's pursuing the policies of the United States in imposing the sanctions and in, you know, harnessing uh, and containing uh, countries, target countries like Iran, like China and Russia and North Korea and Cuba and many others that at least continues for at least 30, 40 others more. Um, so the Chinese have gone for establishing. Uh, an alternative bank, uh, right. actually they have already uh, made success in uh, you know, attracting the attention and investment uh, and partnership of uh, tens of other countries. So, so are you Iran saying the possibility that, sorry to interrupt, you're saying possibility of Iran uh, joining in with that as far as the Chinese bank, is that what you're saying Mustafa? Yes, because uh, okay. China uh, Okay, that's good. I, that's all I need because I'm running out of time. Project. But let me just uh, cross back over to John. Now, John, there are 10 countries which are members of uh, this economic cooperation organization. Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkey, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan with at least 470 million people. I'm looking at possibilities and the future of this. One thing we know that has taken place uh, during this summit is that Iran, Turkmenistan, and Azerbaijan have agreed to swap 2 billion cubic meters of gas per year. The significance of such de deals, and are you optimistic about the future of this organization? A absolutely optimistic, and, and, I, and I also want to underline that I agree with your other guests today that the essence of the problem is in the use of the U.S. dollar. And it, uh, it says in the Bible, give on to Caesar that which is Caesar's. And the Caesar who's running this Anglo-American empire is the Federal Reserve Board that prints the worthless paper that we call dollars. And once you decide you want to be independent from the empire, you've got to stop using the empire's currency as the means of your existence. And I think that Iran is moving in that direction. I think Russia is moving in that direction. I think China is moving in that direction and much of Africa because there is no reason why a small secret group of banksters, as we call them in the West, should be allowed to print toilet paper, which you are forced to use <laughs> to trade among yourselves. Okay, and on that note, I appreciate you being with us. Uh, both of you, Mustafa Khushpes, journalist and political commentator out of Iran, John Busnes, journalist and political analyst out of Switzerland. And as always, uh, viewers, we appreciate you being with us on another Spotlight. I'm Marzia Hashimi. Hope to see you right here next time. Goodbye.